Hello, welcome to the Monday, November 30th, 2020 edition of the Sands and Red Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Well, the long weekend left me with a couple of uh, diaries uh, to talk about. Uh, first one by Xavier about how attackers are using PowerShell to actually patch Windows API calls and with that disable antivirus. This accomplished using a trick that has been around for a year or so and it targets the anti-malware scan interface or AMSI. That's a library that comes with Windows and it's used by anti-malware from different vendors. So by patching in particular the AMSI scan buffer function and have it return nothing, the anti-malware is essentially taken out of the loop if it doesn't detect the code before it runs. Then we got uh, two diaries that are dealing with Yarm. And I think I mentioned Yarm uh, last week. It's a library that Salesforce came up with. Now, uh, Salesforce, of course, has uh, provided the passive uh, TLS fingerprinting uh, library JA3. And uh, that has been heavily used by uh, various uh, threat hunting uh, software like Seek and such, for example, uh, uses it. But with Yarm, it sort of takes an active approach. So you can use Jarm to scan a TLS server and then deduct a part of its function as command control servers in particular want to that I think I already pointed out, uh, Cobalt Strike, but also uh, some uh, malware uses command and control servers with very specific TLS signatures, so uh, they can be identified using the Jarm library. Rick's diary from Friday shows how uh, to use Jarm and uh, how to sort of incorporate it into your threat hunting efforts. Now, the second diary uh, by uh, Didier shows how to use Jarm with a SOX a proxy. So if you don't want to expose, for example, your own IP address. And again, Jarm does active scanning, so uh, use it with care. Let me go to a couple stories that I sort of would like to summarize here. They're not necessarily new, but I think a little bit of urgency now with the holiday shopping season starting and people looking for gifts for relatives and such. Well, uh, be a little bit careful with the various IoT devices. There have been, and of course, there always have been uh, these reports of, of vulnerabilities. Two, I just want to point out. Uh, one was uh, brought to my attention uh, by a member of our Slack channel, and uh, that's that various uh, routers and such sold at Walmart have unpatched security vulnerabilities, some of them rather trivial to exploit, essentially uh, unprotected uh, admin pages. The tricky thing here is that uh, they're sold under various uh, brand names. So, um, for example, Wavelink appears uh, to be a big one, uh, but uh, there are other companies as well uh, that are brand names, I should say, uh, in uh, this article uh, that uh, are mentioned. The problem is, as often with these devices, that uh, there are a couple of manufacturers that turn out essentially identical devices that are then being sold under different brand names, which makes it difficult for an end user, or even more difficult than it already is, uh, to find uh, patches and what vulnerabilities least there are. In particular, in this case, uh, I would uh, call the Wavelink response uh, to this article uh, fairly inadequate. The second article uh, deals uh, with uh, doorbell cameras, of course, also a very uh, popular uh, thing uh, these days. Hardly see a house without any doorbell cameras. And uh, while some of the vulnerabilities uh, that NCC Group and uh, which uh, UK organization uh, sort of pointed out, I think are less of a problem uh, like some of these uh, Wi-Fi vulnerabilities. There are some, some more real, I would say, problems like, for example, sending usernames and passwords in the clear, which are often all sort of indicators of a lack of security awareness in product design and development. 
And back in June, Mobile Iron, uh, Mobile Device Management Suite, uh, did patch a number of uh, flaws. And now I think I mentioned this back then here on the podcast as well. So remember something like this. Well, uh, the UK government is uh, warning now that they're seeing active exploitation of this vulnerability in targeted attacks. Uh, the problem with this vulnerability is that mobile iron, it's nothing that you sort of necessarily run in your household or as such, it's usually more an enterprise tool. Uh, but uh, access to mobile iron also gives you access to essentially all of the devices being managed uh, by these tools. So uh, a real great sort of single point of failure uh, kind of situation if you don't patch uh, mobile iron. So uh, make sure that you're up to date, maybe something uh, to correctly check if you're running uh, this software. Similarly, a large number of uh, passwords for Fortinet uh, VPN concentrators has uh, been published on underground forums. Now, before you waste a lot of time trying to find that dump and uh, check if any of your passwords are in the list, well, uh, first do a scan of your environment and make sure that you are patched. The bug being exploited here, I believe is about two years old. So uh, probably patching should be your first response here and if you're not yet patched yes uh, your password uh, will be in the list you don't even have uh, to check for that well uh, that's it for today so thanks for listening and talk to you again tomorrow